Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to Panacea Tech C. Today, I will be making an in-depth video of how to manually overclock your card using Gigabyte's Oris Engine. So, hang tight as we get the show started. All right, so this guide, even though it can be used by anyone who wants to overclock their card with Gigabyte's Oris Engine, um, I did make it geared towards the newer overclocker. It is uh, you know, my hope that if you are overclocking for the very first time in your entire life, this video should have everything you need to be able to guide you through the entire process from beginning to end. All right, so let's get started. The first thing that we're gonna wanna do, guys, is download all of the software that we're gonna need in order to get this done. And obviously the first one's gonna be the latest version of the Gigabyte Ors Engine. So I'm gonna go ahead and include that in the link below. Just make sure that you uh, log in, go to their website, uh, download the version. You can do so right here where you see Ors Engine and you just click on the, the continent that you're on and it will download the uh, latest version, keep, and then once that file is downloaded, install the file. Once we have that, which is uh, the latest version of the Gigabyte Ors Engine, we then wanna download a benchmark utility. Now. I'm sure everybody who overclocks has their own particular, you know, way or method of doing so. Some people like to use benchmarks, others can do it, usually in actual games. Uh, but for purposes of this video, I'm going to be using Superposition Benchmark uh, by Unengine. I'll go ahead and include a link, of course, uh, so that you can let, download this as well. It's a free utility, and it's one that I've been using lately. To, uh, to overclock my cards and, and I've been doing so well. So once you open it up, you can see here on the left hand side, uh, download the Windows version. And again, hit keep, it's a big file, it's over a gigabyte. So once that's downloaded, go ahead and install it and then we'll be ready to go. All right, so once we've downloaded both programs, gone ahead and installed them, we wanna go ahead and start off by first opening up our Gigabyte Ors engine. Now. I'm going to be doing this video using an NVIDIA RTX 2080 card by Gigabyte. However, regardless of what card you're using, the steps to overclock are going to be exactly the same as the way that I highlight in this video. So when you open up your application, the first time it should look very similar to mine. Where it says GPU boost at the top, that actually indicates the core clock of your actual graphics card. Right below the core clock, as you can see, it says memory clock megahertz. That's your actual memory uh, for your actual, the actual memory speed for your graphics card. Now, right below that, we're going to see where it says GPU voltage. Now, for purposes of this video, we're going to be leaving the GPU voltage locked. You can see there's a little lock icon right next to it. We're going to leave it locked. And the reason why I say this is because with the majority of cards, uh, especially some of the newer cards, whether or not you have your GPU voltage locked or unlocked, it, it really doesn't make a difference uh, in terms of getting the maximum overclock speed for your graphics card. Below that, we're gonna have fan speed. Now we're gonna go ahead and leave that set to auto, but eventually you can click on manual, you can raise the uh, fan speed if you want, or you could even click on customize, and it actually allows you to overclock you know, the perfect little curve that you want for your graphics card, uh, and then when you're done, you would hit apply on that. But for, for now, we're gonna go ahead and click audio. When we get down here where it says power target, uh, as I mentioned, I'm doing this in an RTX 2080, you may have a different card. Therefore, the limits that you have on these for power target and target temp may be different. We're gonna wanna grab this and set them all the way to max. Mine, see where it says 111, yours may be different. Now remember that these limits the power target and target temp, the max, are both set by the manufacturer of your card. Therefore, it's safe. It, they're both safe limits to set your card to. So before we start doing any overclocking whatsoever, we wanna go ahead and max those out and click on apply. Once we've gone ahead and set the power target and the target temp to max, clicked on apply, we're ready to start overclocking our card. Now the way that you overclock your card is by raising both the core clock speed, which here under the Gigabyte Ors engine is labeled as the GPU boost, and the memory clock of your card 
to the highest possible points that your card can handle. The goal is to set both of these figures as high as possible without compromising the stability of your card. And the only way to achieve this is through a tedious process of trial and error. The idea is that we're going to raise our clock speed by a certain amount, then we're going to test it. If it works, we're going to raise it by a little bit more, and so on and so forth, until we reach a point where it's no longer stable. So, some people like to start by overclocking the memory first. But in this video, we're going to start by overclocking the core clock, and once we have a stable core clock, we'll move on to overclocking the memory next. Now, it is a tricky question that I always get. And that is, what should I use as a starting point for my particular card? And the truth is, there is no one answer fits all. It all depends on your graphics card. For example, I happen to know from doing some research that with an RTX 2080, the card that I'm using for purposes of this video, a core clock boost speed of 75 is pretty safe, okay? So that's where I'm gonna go ahead and set this to, and then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply. That's where I'm gonna start. However, if you have a different card, your starting point may be much higher than mine, or if you wanna play it safe, you can always start, for example, at, uh, at plus 10. And then from there, just kinda work, you know, bring it down to plus 10, apply that, and then go ahead and work your way up. But on an NVIDIA RTX 2080, we're gonna go ahead and start it on plus 75. Once we have a starting point, have applied it, it's time to open up our superposition benchmark. When you open up your application, the first time it should look identical to this. There's a certain presets over here on the right hand side that you can use for testing your card. I'm going to be using 1080p Extreme. However, if this setting is too demanding for your card, you may go ahead and, and lower it to 1080p High and if that's still too demanding, you can bring it down to 1080p medium if necessary. Once I've set my initial core clock boost on the Gigabyte Ors engine, I've now hit apply. It's time for me to run the benchmark. Now the benchmark can take a couple of minutes to go through all 17 of its slides, but know that if you're able to run the entire benchmark from beginning to end without having any screen tearing, card crashing, or PC restarts, then you can proceed assuming that the core clock speed that we have applied is safe. So, if we're able to get through all 70 slides and finish the video, I can assume that plus 75 is a safe boost. So the next step is gonna be to increase that. Now, people like to ask me, What's the best way to go up by it? I like to, I like to go up by increments of 25. So if initially it was plus 75, I ran the benchmark and that worked. I'm next gonna try it at plus 100. So I'm gonna go ahead and raise this here to plus 100, hit apply, and now I'm gonna run the benchmark again. I'm gonna continue to do this process until I get to a core clock speed that doesn't work. All right, guys, so I went ahead and raised it by 25. I ran the benchmark all the way through. I raised it again by 25. Now, when I got to 175 and I was running the benchmark, it's literally the screen went black in the middle of the benchmark. So that was my sign that I had reached. I had gone past over the limit that I could go. So I stopped at 175. Now what I'm gonna do is, I know that at 150, right? Because that was the last one I ran, it worked fine. And at 175, it was too much. So I'm gonna bring it down by 10. I'm gonna try it, bring it down to uh, 175, I'm sorry, to uh, 165. I'm gonna hit apply. And now I'm gonna go ahead and run it once again. After running it at 165, it once again crashed. So now what I'm gonna do is, I know that I'm good at 150, but at 165, I'm too much. I'm gonna bring it down by only five. At 160, I'm gonna click apply, and I'm gonna run the benchmark once again. All right, so I was able to run the entire superposition benchmark at 1080p extreme 
flawlessly from beginning to end with a core clock GPU boost increase of plus 160. So that is what I'm going to keep as the setting for my core clock plus 160. Now let's move on to the memory clock. Now very similar to how we did our core clock, we're going to want to start with an initial increase. And the only way to know that point is honestly by doing some research. I know that with an RTX 2080, it's safe for me to start with around plus 800. Okay, so that's what I'm going to choose as my starting point. We're going to go ahead and, and set it. There we go to 800. We're going to hit apply. We're going to run our benchmark. If it works with memory clock speed, I like to increase by 200. Okay. And what I will do is I will continue to do this, the same process that I've done until I get the tearing, my computer crashes, the video card crashes, and I have to restart. Once I've reached that point, I know that I've reached my max. So let's go ahead and now, now that it's set to 800, I'm going to hit apply and I'm going to run this benchmark. All right, so I was able to reach 2,200 uh, increase before the card crashed. So that means that when I was at 2,000 plus megahertz, it ran just fine. Now, a lot of you may be confused and wondering how is it possible to get plus 2,200 on an RTX 2080? The answer to that question is something funny about the way the Gigabyte Aorus engine works. So for example, even though over here you're seeing plus 2200, in reality, the actual boost you're getting on that memory clock is half of that. So if it's 2200, half of that would be 1100. So the actual boost is 1100, but I'm not sure why, but for some reason, the Gigabyte Aorus engine on this particular card has it showing as plus 22. So just know that I'm not actually getting plus 2200. I'm, you're only getting 50% of whatever the figure you're seeing there. I'd be interested to know if uh, some of you guys have the same issue where it kind of shows twice the megahertz or if it uh, if it works normally on yours. So I'm, I'm not sure what the issue is there, but there certainly is one. So now that we've gotten that disclaimer out there, um, we know that it it, uh, it did work at 2000, it did not work at 2200. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna reduce it by 100, okay? So I'm gonna bring it down to 2100 and I'm gonna go ahead, hit apply, and I'm gonna run the benchmark once again. All right, after running it at 21, it crashed once again. So what I'm gonna do at this point is I'm gonna bring it right back to 2000. I'm gonna assume that it is safe at 2000. That is already plus 1000 megahertz, 50% of the number I'm seeing there, uh, which is plenty of speed. So my core clock is at 160, my memory clock is at plus 2000. So once I have my ideal overclock GPU boost for the card, my ideal overclock boost for the memory clock, I like to go ahead and save the profile over here on the uh, left hand side of the Gigabyte Aorus Engine application. In order to do that, you want to go ahead and make sure that you've set your boost clocks, you've clicked apply, and after you've applied it, you want to click on that little save icon, which is uh, right there next to that little trash can. And once you've saved it, that way if you ever lose uh, your actual overclock, you can always just click on the profile, load it, hit apply, and you're good to go. Now, I do want to interject here with a small note to everyone and remind you guys that using a benchmark utility, regardless of how demanding it is, it's not the same as real life applications. This means that even though you were able to run this benchmark successfully from beginning to end, there's still a slight possibility that your overclock settings are still a bit too high. Unfortunately, the only way to test this is by just using your computer, by applying the overclock that we reached here, and then using your computer in games and graphics demanding applications. That way you can further test the stability of your overclock. And if you happen to run into any crashes or any issues, just feel free to come back and, and make the changes to the overclock that we did decide on. I want to thank everyone for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions regarding anything I've discussed, 
please feel free to leave your comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe and shoot me a thumbs up as it literally makes all the difference to someone like me. Thank you for sticking around and happy overclocking everyone.